Well, welcome back to the show. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. We're ex- yeah, we're excited to have you back. Um, we're going to go through a couple of different things. I know that you've had a very exciting uh, 2018 into 2019. As Carol mentioned in the open, uh, in episode 98, when we last talked to you, uh, we were playing against the Columbus uh, team, and uh, we had come back from being in an 0-2 hole, and it was very exciting. We also talked to you. Definitely go back and check out episode 98 if they missed it. Uh, but uh, it was a really one of the most listened to our interviews of the entire season three, so we knew we had to get you back on before season four. And uh, so first of all, I wanted to sort of pick up where we left off. Uh, what were some of your thoughts uh, in sort of winning that Columbus series and then obviously going on to vanquish a foe in Pittsburgh. What were some of your thoughts on those series? And uh, overall, have you ever had a big rival that you've ever defeated in a big moment? And what was sort of some of those experiences like? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think those series for the Caps were huge, obviously. They have came back from being down in the series, and I think that's kind of what gave them the confidence to move forward past those two series. I think they knew that they could do it after they had come back from being so down. So I think it's important, you know, for teams to go through that type of adversity, especially early, and kind of you get that confidence that your your team can do it and you can fight back, and then you kind of just band together for the rest of the, the, rest of the playoffs, and that showed, and that's why they, they won the Stanley Cup. So um, in my experiences, definitely with – the U.S. and Team Canada, that's our huge rival, so it's always a battle, it's always a back and forth game and series, and I think it was the same thing, we kind of, we lost a bunch of games going into the Olympics against them and we kind of we just figured out what we needed to do to to beat them and we needed to come together and just figure out how to get through that adversity and kind of um, overcome those previous losses and that's kind of how we how we took home the gold medal yeah, I mean, it was a, an exciting matchup for sure. I mean, the whole run was pretty incredible, but obviously uh, that was pretty great to beat Team Canada. I know as a fan of, uh, you know, the Olympics in general, it's always interesting in the Winter Olympics. Canada is always right there with Russia, and they're always difficult foes in almost every sport. So it was very exciting uh, to see you guys uh, be able to finally beat them in the biggest game, I'm sure, of your life. Um, oh, sorry, uh, the Kuznetsov game winner and then sort of going to the Eastern Conference Finals after so many years. I know you've been a diehard Caps fan for a long time, getting back to the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what were some of your thoughts uh, after Obviously, that? Yeah. It was amazing when they were able to get past Pittsburgh. That uh, Kuznetsov overtime goal was something extremely special, and I remember just, jumping up and down and just could not believe that they finally got past Pittsburgh and everyone's like, like, that's all they needed to do. And I, and I was thinking to myself, like they have so much, there's still so many more games to be played there. Tampa's an unbelievable team and program and they did so well in the regular season as well. So you couldn't overlook those games, but it was, it was such a special moment because it hadn't really ever happened. And to do that, like in overtime was, it was so cool to watch. It was an unreal goal, obviously, big assist from Ovechkin it just was it was just te- textbook for sure uh quickly because uh, I want to obviously get into the sort of the the cup game real fast also but what were some of your thoughts on those last two games against Tampa Bay for Holpe standing on his head uh and for some much maligned players like Burakovsky uh scoring some big time goals and then finally making it uh back to the finals that was huge for Burakovsky in my opinion he's always one of those players where he can be quiet for a long period of time and you're, um, you know, he's one of those on the fence players. People are like, he needs to play with uh, really good players around him in order to be successful. And so for him to score those two huge goals, um, they needed that and they needed him. It was kind of, it solidified, you know, his um, role on the team and that he does bring a lot to the table. And I think that was great for his confidence moving forward and just, getting different contributions from everyone from, you know, players like Burakovsky to Holpe in net, you know, they needed him. He didn't start playing in the playoffs. It was Grubauer, obviously. So to see how he stepped up when they needed him after being uh, um, not the starting goalie for the playoffs was, it was cool to just see all these players kind of fight their own battles and bring, you know, everything they overcome to, um, to the whole team. And you could, you could see they all just kind of, stuck to their role and that's kind of what gets you past teams like Tampa and 
um, it you really perform in big moments when everyone is playing for one another and not just themselves. For sure. And then obviously uh, winning the cup, uh, doing it in Vegas, doing it in five. Uh, it was a really exciting final. I know that you got to be on NBC Sports Washington a couple of times. Uh, and uh, where were you? Uh, I know you said you were in D.C., I believe, uh, for game five. How, how is that moment for you uh, when we finally uh, were able to hoist the Stanley Cup? That was it was crazy. I just remember I was like, I cannot believe that this is actually happening. And my brother was in Vegas for it actually. So I remember being extremely jealous that he, you know, took that chance and went out there. And I was like, I was like, I know that they're going to win it in Vegas. Like I know that they're going to, and it was just, I was really jealous of everyone. Um, I remember, but I was just so obviously excited that they had finally won the Stanley cup. It's kind of just like a surreal moment. I mean, obviously I, you know, wasn't, a player on the team but as just like a lifelong fan it's something that you just you you can't believe and they obviously were so deserving of it especially after all of those years where they were supposed to win it and they were supposed to win it and then uh they didn't just to see them kind of win it when no one really expected them to just made it that much better and I still had them in my bracket going all the way I always do so um I'm glad that there was yeah and to win against, you know, Vegas, a brand new team, they had an incredible season being a brand new franchise. They completely exceeded expectations. So it was a really exciting series. And I'm glad that the Caps were able to make a statement and bring it home. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, I got one more question about this, and then I'm going to let Carol ask a question as well. And the last question in this line of questioning is about uh, the – uh, big parade that I know that Carol was at, I was at, and you were at, and you were actually on TV for, I, I believe, some on Sports Washington. Uh, what was your experience like on parade day? That was insane. I could not believe all of the people who were there and just the excitement. And, I mean, you know, D.C. hockey exploded this year in that area because of the Capitals and to see everyone come together and support, you know, and just see – the rally, everything. It was really just really, really cool. Um, and to be able to talk about it on television with NBC Sports Washington was obviously an incredible moment for me. And yeah, just to see, you know, the celebration, the, the players, you could just tell that they were so proud and all the fans were so proud. And it was just a really, um, a really cool moment for the city and for the sport of hockey in general. I know. I I wanted that so much for Ovechkin, and just I never wanted to be the franchise that held yeah. him back. I just wanted him and Nick Backstrom and a lot of these long time. You know, hope he's actually been with the team for quite some time. People kind of forget that because he's still very young. Uh, but uh, you know, it was just incredible for all of them. Well, I'll let Carol ask a couple quick questions uh, and uh, take it away. All right. Uh, how you doing tonight, Miss Garupa? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Just in here uh, enjoying this great interview, reliving the uh, Cap series. I guess I'll go ahead and chime in and put my two cents in because it was a memorable, memorable thing for me also as a lifelong Caps fan. Um, we talked about the uh, 2 start with Columbus and see the momentum swing, you know, with the overtime goal that uh, made it 2-1 and able for them to, you know, go on that amazing run. <clears throat> we see the team now, you know, kind of getting that form back together. They had a couple of hiccups this past week that we'll break down in the second half of the hour. But um, do you see that same that same chemistry and that same hunger coming back together with this team right now that you saw last year when they went on that impressive run? I definitely do, yeah. I think it's, it's always hard to tell until the playoffs start, obviously, because it's just a whole different style of hockey the, the NHL playoffs are. But I think um, I think it was important that they had that, you know, kind of losing streak, I guess. It was a month or so ago. And I think that was actually extremely important for them because they had been doing so well before that and they hadn't really experienced any obstacles or challenges or things that they needed to figure out or, like, a lot of changes in the lineup. Um, so I think times like those are really important for teams. And I think that they just got over that. Now they're kind of – um, they had a couple of hiccups last week, as you said, but now that they're kind of getting back into their groove and they made a couple of, you know, trades, obviously they got Haglin, which I think is a huge pickup. I think it's all kind of coming together in the right moment. It's hard to tell, but I think um, timing wise and seeing where they're at right now versus what they faced previously, they're definitely putting themselves in a good spot. 
Totally agree, totally agree. I also say that they're going to go back-to-back. I agree with Oshi. I've been saying that most of the season. They're <laughs> going to come together and uh, do it because they did it last year. They know what it takes. And the fact that they were able to, <clears throat> excuse me, close out all three of the, uh, all of all four of the series on the road, which was an impressive feat in itself, and along with beating, beating Pittsburgh, it was a, it was a great thing to see, and I think they can do it again. Uh, I guess I'll ask, you know, Alex Ovechkin is one of my favorite players. Tom Wilson is my second favorite, of course. But um, the numbers that he puts up and the way that he plays for the amount of time that he plays, that he's playing, and the physical style along with the scoring, you being a, a hockey athlete, and from what Robbie uh, told me, your numbers from this past season were very impressive. So I want to take my hat off to you because uh, those were some very impressive mm-hmm. numbers. But to perform at that level for so long, what does it take for an athlete to be able to perform like that, you being an athlete, you know, playing the way you are in your current situation? Um, Well, obviously it's, you know, the training, the physical aspect, but I think the most important part of being able to do that for so long, for especially Ovechkin and playing at that level for as long as he has and maintaining his um, success, is it's mostly mental, really. I think he's kind of just... Uh, found this mentality that he's he kind of is just gonna he just goes out there and he does his thing and he doesn't really let much else get in the way and you can tell that he's a, he enjoys it and he's really like I think that's the biggest part is honestly just enjoying the enjoying the journey and kind of just taking it as it is and he's kind of he, obviously he's you know an animal of an athlete and he's you know so obviously intense aggressive however you know and he scores a bunch of goals but I think you can tell that he has fun out there. And I see that when I watch him play. And that's kind of what I um, love to see out of players is just them really enjoying it. Cause if you're going to, you know, overthink, overanalyze and stress about different mistakes or a loss or something like that, it really wears on you. And you can see like he kind of a loss that he just throws it away and it's on to the next game. And he's kind of led his team that way in the past couple of years. And I think that's, really important for kind of maintaining like long-term success and and it, and it shows it definitely does definitely does just uh, one more quick question with this uh being the uh, nhl gender equality month uh what has the nhl and uh done during these times to help get the uh women's hockey leagues like that you're in right now you know, up and running and get more women involved in hockey because uh, we've seen a, a big boost, like you mentioned, with the hockey in this area with the Caps winning the Cup. But with, uh, you know, what you guys did a couple of years ago, it's been a boost. So so can you talk about some of that stuff that goes on? Yeah, definitely. You've seen um, – I've seen a huge explosion in, um, like, girls' hockey and, like, the youth and – and on around, I'm living in Boston right now, so it's I kind of just see it all over here in D.C. for sure, and just kind of all over the country, like so many more, there's so many more girls' teams, so many more opportunities for girls to play hockey, and the interest level is, it's just at an all-time high, I think, and with the two different um, women's leagues going, I think that those have, they've done really well. I think it's important in the long term um, if those two leagues obviously come together to make one really strong league, like obviously the NHL on the female side, I think that would be something that would be really, really cool to see for women's hockey. But to see it at the grassroots grassroots level grow so much within the past year or two is is awesome. And I'm really, really excited to see uh, grow even more in the years to come. I, I had a follow-up question to that because I was actually going to get into that in just a few minutes myself. Uh, there, the, there's a groundswell, and I don't even know since you're in Boston right now if you've heard about it, but the NWHL, the, there's a bunch of fans who want to bring the NWHL to Washington, D.C. I don't know if you were aware of that, what your thoughts are. I know that you're from this area, um, or what your thoughts on expansion um, into this area. Yeah, I mean, I kind of heard a couple of, rumblings about it about it and people have actually asked me like oh like would you want that like um how cool would that be and obviously it would be amazing for me being from that from the dc area growing up there to see a professional women's team come out of that area would be amazing and i think it would do great things for you know the growing of the game around there um could only help obviously excuse me but i think um 
yeah, obviously I would be all for it. It would be really, really cool to see. Yeah, I'll actually maybe invite you to this group. I'm one of the founding members of the Bring NWHL to Washington, D.C. group. It's a public group. We're trying to grow it. So I, uh, I would love to have you uh, talk to some of these ladies because I know that they uh, love the, the league and would love to have expansion. And I, I can't think of somebody better to help, um, you know, than somebody who's such a big star in this area. Um, Right now, there's only five teams in the league. A new team won it this year. Uh, can you speak to uh, how some, uh, how the league went overall, maybe your preparation for it, how you got to be? And I, I want to read off some of these statistics because I, I definitely wanted to piggyback off of what Carol said. You were the number one in points per game in the league, number four in total points, and number two in assists. You had 12 assists in 13 games, which is pretty incredible. Uh, so hats off to you. You obviously yeah. prepared – well for this season can you talk about some of your preparation how this season went and I know it was a little bit of a disappointing end in the playoffs yeah um it was obviously the off season is where you kind of get going and do a lot it's a lot of off uh off ice training and then we had um preseason stuff like that and then you kind of just get right into it so um it was it was obviously a very competitive season uh Buffalo and Minnesota any given day like we were probably the top three teams and it really came down to the wire it could have been any one of us to bring home the uh the cup so it was cool to see Minnesota win it in their first year it was really fun to play them they had an incredible fan base so did Buffalo and um it's it is it's very exciting for the league and I think um our team did did a great job it was it was a really fun season and I think Obviously, there's work to be done, but overall, I think we did take a step in the right direction. Yeah, can you shed some light on, you mentioned another league, and I actually don't know as much about the other league, uh, and has there been any talks of any sort of, you know, alignment, adding new teams to this league, you know, or anything like that? Yeah, so the other league, it's the CWHL, the Canadian Women's Hockey League, and it's a lot of um, the Canadian, like, Canada national team players and some of our um, U.S. Olympians now play in that league because it's it is also a very competitive league and they've been around I think longer than the NWHL and have a couple more teams. Um, they play two games a week instead of one and it's just um, it's a lot more travel but they it's also just an incredibly competitive league and I think there has been um, some discussion of eventually bringing them together uh, because it would just be like a super league really. And it would probably be that much more exciting to watch for fans. Cause it would be like us versus Canada every game. And I right. kind of, that's where we're all hoping it leads. And I think that's what some discussions have been about for the near future. Hopefully. That'd be really awesome. Would you be okay to switch? Obviously playing once a week and twice a week is very different. I mean, we, we cover lots of different sports, you know, football you know, is only one game a week. That would be really intensive. It was two or, you know, hockey, they play three or four, to, you know, in the NHL level are, would you guys be ready for a twice a week? I mean, that's a completely different sort of schedule and grueling. And I'm sure there'd be many more games. I was looking at total number of games this season to accommodate that many teams. I'm sure the number of games would probably get close to double. Yeah, it would be. Uh, that's kind of what we did in college. So it would be, it was more of an adjustment to kind of cut them down for us than to increase them because college we played twice every week and in high school we played, it was like four or five games a weekend, um, three 20 minute periods, full games. And we had less lines. Obviously that was a long time ago for me. Um, I can't, I can't imagine doing that right now, honestly, playing four games in a weekend. My body would definitely deteriorate, but I think two would be actually be perfect. Um, just like a double header with a team, like obviously a team, you go there, you play two games, they come here. Um, it would definitely make obviously the travel all worthwhile. So that would be, I think ideal actually to have two, two games in one weekend. Well, I'm going to bring in our third host real quickly, Anna Knox, uh, who's a big fan of yours and she has a question uh, from her and her daughter. So uh, Anna, why don't you take the next question? I will. Oh, it's, such, it's so great, Haley, that you're on. I, I had a question last uh, year and was like, oh, my gosh, such, so great <laughs> that you responded. So um, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and she's a swimmer, um, but she has kind of uh, 
you know, followed my footsteps and becoming a huge Caps fan and, and met a couple of the players. And so when I told her I was going to be uh, talking to you tonight, she had a question and she was wondering if there is any athlete, hockey or not, that you would like to meet. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> well, to be honest, I've always wanted to meet Serena Williams, the tennis player. She was always one of my favorite uh, athletes yeah. growing up and still is. And fortunately, I actually did meet her last year after we won the Olympics. We went to, uh, it was like a fundraising tournament at Madison Square Garden, our team. And her and Venus were um, playing in the tournament just for fun. And so we were able to meet them and get like a photo with them. And it was it was really cool because she was just so humble and she was just really funny honestly it wasn't like robotic or didn't seem like you know she was bothered and she was just awesome and I really obviously appreciated her taking the time and she's such a powerful female athlete and just an athlete in general and so that was really cool that's a great question yeah yeah I know when she said I was like all right because I thought for sure she was going to ask you if you like Tom Wilson because it's a little bit of an influence here in my house but uh, that's okay. But I do, though. I'm funny a that you, Tom Wilson fan as well. Oh, yeah. How can you not be? Um, <laughs> but it's funny because with the Williams sisters, uh, they're from Compton, and I have lived not far from where they were playing, and, and kind of when they started, it was you had the news out there, you had the LA Times and, and whatever in, in California, and it was very much like, people either really loved them and supported the dad and his competitiveness or they were over hearing about it. And then, you know, here we are so many, you know, like almost two decades later, it's like they are fantastic athletes and I would want my daughter to absolutely look up to them because they have every, you know, they have the skill they have. And like you said, they were humble and that I really appreciate so I yeah, think they're that, fierce that's athletes. A, I can see oh, how they yeah. can like deter some people with like how intense they are, but it's just what they've done for you know just the landscape of female sports has been unbelievable the past however many years. Oh, absolutely, uh, and I couldn't agree with you more. And then you have Serena. Is it Serena? I think that just had the baby. And yeah, and then came back. Suddenly, you know, you you see a completely different side of a female a female athlete, and now she's a mom, and she's like, you know, almost. Uh, oh wait, she's not just a super athlete; she's a human too, and she does you see the all. softer side of her. And I, yeah. yeah, she just rocks. So I think that's great. But yeah, my daughter Avery was like, "Oh, who would she like to meet?" Um, and then <laughs> I have like kind of a sort of a random question, but I would love to know um, in the all-star competition, if you had a favorite, um, like a, something that in the all-star competition that you would like to compete in, that you think you would just absolutely excel in. Um, yeah. In ours this past year for the NWHL, I did the shooting accuracy and in years in Nashville, two right? years ago, yeah, okay. and yeah, two yeah. years ago I did, like, the fastest skater, which I'm not a huge fan of because I'm probably not the fast, to be honest. So um, I enjoyed the shooting accuracy. I think one for the future, if I were to yeah. choose another one, would probably be, like, the, the trick shot, not because I'm, like, super creative with breakaway moves, but I think it would just be a fun thing just to try and see see what I can come up with. I think that would be my go-to for moving forward. But I did enjoy the shooting accuracy. That would probably be my first overall choice. Um, that that was a yeah. Fun that's one. awesome. Because I and I have a you know a, a, I love to watch it and you know whether uh, you know I don't care who's playing. I don't you know at that time you don't kind of look at the team so much as you're just really in awe of the players and and then when you have Kendall go out and you know, kick ass and, and think, oh, my gosh, you know, females are out there and kicking ass, and this is so fantastic. Yeah, it's she like, was unbelievable. You know, <laughs> truly. And and so I was like, you know, if, you know, you're out there and we all think that you kick ass, like, what would be that one you go up against Johnny Hockey or, 
you know, whatever, you know, whomever, and <laughs> yeah. what would be your choice? Yeah, that would probably be, I, the stick handling one, that's what um Johnny did. That would be, actually be interesting. I would like to see how I uh, would do with that. He's won it two years in a row now. I actually went to school with him, so it's no surprise after watching him at BC. <laughs> it's no surprise seeing how successful he is with Calgary, because he's just crushing it right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, the stick handling one would be interesting too, actually. Yeah, I loved watching you do the shootout one at the Caps game against, I think it was the Rangers last year. We talked about that on the last podcast we were together, but you just oh, yeah. sniped every single one of those so fast. So I definitely can understand. I mean, that's very similar to what I imagine the accuracy contest would be like. So I'm sure you'd be great at that. So. Yeah, it was actually pretty similar. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty cool. So, uh, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and I really appreciate you joining us again. And I'm hoping uh, in season four, as we get towards the playoffs maybe having you back on i know that was really fun having you um on during the playoff time uh but um any yeah, any any final things or uh, anything that you're up to uh leading up to the summer or anything that you're up to that you want to let our fans know about i know that there's a lot of fans of yours and uh, uh any final messages you want to give to our fans um, I mean, I might be back in DC in the DC area come playoffs, so we'll see what I'm up to in that area. Just be bopping around the hockey community there and seeing what the Caps do this year. I'm really excited. That sounds good. Well, uh, we really appreciate all your time uh, as always, and uh, we look forward to having you on in a couple of weeks for season four as we get into the playoffs. But again, thank you so much, and uh, hope that you have a great rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you again, Robbie, for having me.